Hello there, I'm Zach, and this is 90 Second Church. If you like what you see, follow us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, and all of that jazz. We are actually hopping back to chapter 4 in Thessalonians in our series, Here's Hope. We're going to take another look at the verses 11 and 12 because there's a second part that we didn't really address and I wanted to look at it. So here are the verses as a refresher. Make it your goal to live a quiet life, minding your own business and working with your hands, just as we instructed before. Then people who are not believers will respect the way you live. And then here's the new part. And you will not need to depend on others. So last week we covered the first bit, uh, but now I want to talk about this last bit. And what does it mean exactly to depend on others? Well, let's check out what the experts have to say. (laughs) There are two lines of thought on who others are. It's either going to be those outside the church or those inside the church, which I think does just about cover everyone, doesn't it? <laughs> Remember that the Thessalonian church is in its infancy and without an atmos- and within a- an atmosphere of hostility all around it. They are undergoing persecution. And it's within this context and specifically Paul's urging of what kind of work they should be looking for and, and, and working that we should interpret this statement. You will not need to depend on others. So let's look at the first one, the outside the church option. There are many jobs that depend on the favor of others, whether it's nationally high profile like a politician or locally high profile like a teacher or a business owner. So perhaps what Paul is saying here is that since the church is being persecuted, you shouldn't bring unnecessary attention onto it by being a high profile worker. Or perhaps within the same vein, he's cautioning those from pursuing high profile jobs because due to their connection with the church, they will have a difficult time. Or maybe he's cautious, uh, he cautions against it because of the temptation to turn away from their values when facing the wrath of those that support them. It could be any of those. The second view, though, is also interesting, even if it's different. Remember how impressed Paul was with the church's brotherly love for each other? It's possible that some of the members of the church had embraced the coming of Jesus so fervently they quit their day jobs and were relying on the generosity of others within the church. If this view is true, Paul is reminding them that love is a two-way street. It's both given and received. And to continually take advantage of help where none was actually needed was not an activity done in love. (laughs) Regardless of which view you take, whether it's the outside or the inside, the conclusion you come to doesn't actually differ that much. Do you remember our summary statement last week? I remind you. You are God's representative in the way you live and the way you work. Do both to God's glory. I think it applies no matter how you look at it. Think about it. I'll see you next time.